The higher stock density was the first year after the grazing. It's still showing up. I still haven't caught up with this yet. Okay. Okay, this you just give it a couple of clicks. I was dale grazing my calves. One more click. I don't know if you can see it, but this here is a different color green than in here. I come down here with bales. I was setting them up with a tractor every day because there's only a few calves. Or every few days. And then I went, we got a snowstorm, I went back up here and I thought I was starting in line coming down here. Well, I got over here and came down. So in here didn't have any bales. Okay, next one. See the, uh, the litter where there was no bales? The next one. How much greener it is? The deer just love that one more time. Okay. Here's where I put bales where I guess. See how much green there? Okay, no green over the next one. There's the regrowth where the green was. No bale. So less seed, not near as deep a green. Okay. See the one put in here, this is my grandkids. One's in where the bale was, the other is, isn't Okay. Here's where the bale was, see the litter on top. Next one. See how the ground is covered? You can see the little plants right there. The little ones are just germinating this first thing in the spring. And the ground cover. Okay. See there's no ground cover here where there's no bale. Next one. Okay, one more push. See the right there, the crack? One more. The crack right there. The ground, ground is already starting to dry out in the spring with no litter cover. Okay. Now, deep massage uh, is something I'm doing. I know how good I feel after a deep massage, and my land is responding the same way. Okay. This is what I do as I, uh, one, this paddock here, I only eat it once a year before, and I stockpile all the grass, and it'll be a couple feet tall. Um, and I just leave it, and in the spring, I come in, as soon as the grass, as soon as I can get onto it, and the cows will eat it, there may be green grass in it, there may not be. And I turn the cows in there, I'll put the 7 800 head on an acre, and I'll let them clean it right off. Next one. It'll look something like this. This isn't near, this is low stock density. This is you put years ago, but I'm just giving you an idea. There's the old and the new. Okay? That's what it'll look like when I finish. Okay? Now here's what I do is I roll a bale out. Skip a bale, roll a bale. Like that. They eat that right off to nothing. And then I'll go out. Okay, next. And put a bale there, and put a bale there. And when they clean that up, I'll add another eight. I try to cover the whole acre in one day. And then they'll walk back over this to the water watering point over here. And I just keep adding on for about eight to ten days. And then I give a long recovery time. This is a straight crest of wheat field. This is what the expert told me to do is you've got to have crest wheat the first thing in the spring. It's supposed to be an invasive species. Okay, keep going. Okay, this is another one. This is on uh, June the 2nd, next one. That's a okay, yellow. Here's June 27th, that's what, 25, 25-day recovery. Uh, there's a difference between rest and recovery. Rest uh, is time. Say you break your arm and you're sleeping for 25 days, you got lost to rest. But you don't have enough recovery time, you gotta have time for the good growing days that come home. If it doesn't rain, you've got no recovery time. So you've got to have rains to get your recovery of your, your put your root system down. Okay? This is a straight crest of wheat field that was going backwards on me. There's a lot of pussy toe. Do you have pussy toe down here? It's a little plant that barely gets off the ground. Nothing eats it. It's just ground cover is all it is and those weeds. This is my straight crest of wheat field. Okay, just keep pushing. This is where I've done the deep massage. One more. August 24th. 120 day recovery because I ate it off so short that shut everything down for a long time. I had to give it a longer recovery period. Okay. I got 111 ADAs on that. Okay. This is two years later. 
In two years, I had over on a straight pressure wheat field, I had 40 plus species of different vegetation of the cattle. And, okay, and I had 123 ADAs. Okay, this is what happened. You know what? <coughs> keep going until the red line comes. Okay, this side here, I get the high stock density. These two, we dug this holes with the back hole, they were about from here to that wall apart. Um, this one here I did the deep massage on. And see here? They, okay, this one here had twice the litter one and two on it. And if you see the root system in it, uh, the guys from Nebraska University, they figure there's 50 to 60 percent more root mass in the top 23 inches than this. And see how much deeper the black carbon is stored in the land here than here? And that's, was, I did this in 06, oh no, next picture is 06, okay. Keep going. Okay, this, see the, the, this is where the high stock density was, but this is where the deep massage was. See, it all looks like cottage cheese, it's little lumps, and the, uh, the, the, the make, it's got a lot of humailing, I think you can call it. Yes? Deep massage is where I eat, stockpile the grass, eat it right off to nothing, and then I roll my bales out and do the real high stock density on it, and then roll more bales out. That's the deep massage. What time of year? What time of year? I do this first thing in the spring. As soon as the snow is gone, if I, if I can get the guy to bring me in cattle early on, I like to do this with the urines early on. Um, what I found was the cattle would come in early and I could do the Bud Williams type of thing training them so they'll go by me and put them on hay a month before they go to grass. I got 0.52 pounds gain more on those. Which, uh, one year we had some come in early and some late. And the ones that didn't get as much training and the hay, they were on silage. They gained 0.52 pounds less than ones that were on silage. And then as soon as I've got enough grass, then I'll, I just kind of move them over the grass slowly. So it's a slow change, it's not a big change. You don't have to change the, the microorganism, what do you call it, uh, in their stomach, the bacteria in their stomach to break the silage down is different than the bacteria for the, for the grass. Okay? So this soil here will soak up way more moisture. We did a Gene Golden in North Dakota, he did a water infiltration test when he first started this, and it was 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 inches an hour when he started. And a few years ago, the university came out and he has his 8, eight to 13, uh, 10 or 13, to 13 inches an hour water infiltration. Mine is up to 10 inches an hour, so I can take a 10 inch rain and it'll soak it up and get one off. So most of our Flooding is all man-made, the way we have farmed for the last 100 to 200 years. The Gene Golden this year had a, a big rainfall. The neighbors had running water running all over. He didn't have any water running. He went back a few days later and his little gullies were running, running fresh water down the gullies. It went into the soil, went through the soil, and was coming out. And it was all clean. Okay? Next one. Okay, yeah, this is Dwayne Beck stuff. One and a half to two percent organic matter in your land. You can hold 35 to 45 pounds of water. Next one. Four to five percent is uh, 65 to 95. No, sorry, 165. But <laughs> it's kicking. 195 pounds of water. And most of my soil, the last time I did it was uh, five to seven organic matter. Okay. Now this is, uh, yes? So did you test it? I didn't test it when I started, but it's getting better, so I don't know where it was. Uh, now this will happen to you. Now I, I used to use a lot of permanent fence. I've changed my mind on that. I don't want, the only place I want permanent fence is down the middle of a 160 acres. I, and then I'll run, I would run my 
Uh, all these running expanses with all these different ways of putting our water lines in, a lot of these risers I'm not going to be using anymore because I'm making the cows work, walk, and then I can watch them walk a quarter of a mile of water, or a half a mile, and they start kicking and bucking. I know they're feeling good. If not, I've got to keep changing. I can monitor them. Or if I walk them down these lane alleyways, and I, the, lab, the ones that are going to be sicker are going to be in the last 10 or 15% of the ones that walk out of the paddock. So you just peel them off and check them better than the rest. Uh, I make my alleys 28 feet wider. Uh, in our area, when the, all we had was Gallagher before. Powerflex is just coming in now. But they had a bungee cord that went to 30 feet wide. It was already made up. And if you drove over it with the quad, I'll show you what I got. But if you drove over it, you'd bust it. You made it 28 feet wide, you don't have to get off the quad to do the gate. So I made all mine 28 feet. But what I found was by doing that, I used to have them about 40, 50. You'd try to try to take an animal home with a quad, and they could always get back and hurt them. You always beat you. Well, now they all, you get them in front of you, and you just pressure them, and they try to come back, just back up a bit, and then pressure them, and then all of a sudden they'll just start walking down the alley, and you don't have to get off the quad. They, they don't try to beat you. And it doesn't matter whether they're spread out a mile or two miles long, as long as they're always moving. And what I'm finding with these alleys now, I just put them in the alley and I go home and wait for them to come. They just come. And I'll show you later on how I designed it. I watched them handle people in uh, Disneyland and I set up a system like that. <laughs> people in Canada are all alike. When we go through the food chain tonight, you look at somebody with a long narrow face and narrow chin, I don't want too many cows like that because they can eat, 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 and not gain weight. You look at me when I go through, I got a square jaw, a little short head. I put weight on going through the salad bar. And that's the same way with cattle. You, you, you watch Kit's stuff tomorrow. Those cattle he's got are the same thing with me. And they've got a little wrong gun on them. Easy keepers. Okay, so here's what happened here. Underneath where I can't get the animal impact, this is the first place my weeds come in. There's absence and pussy toe and all your weeds come under there. In the next picture. This is a picture of Terry Gomp took to my place last year. For this summer, is it like? Up here is where the fence was. And out here is where I had the animal impact. See how the carbon is deeper out here from underneath where there's no animal impact? Next one. I've got so much time on my hands, I'm lucky I didn't start this when I was 25 years old because I'd have 10 or 15 kids or I might, might be on my second or third wife because I spend so much time in the house like this. <laughs> okay. This is what we did when Terry was up a couple of years ago. We were showing them about a million pounds of beef. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 600,000 something. Just keep clicking. Okay, that was raised a day later. Now, my son, the tour was at my place on the 24th, and it was at uh, Gene Goldman's on the 25th at Turtle Lake, North Dakota. And my son was home, and he was supposed to move in the same way I do. Well, good intentions, but the neighbor boy phoned him on to go golfing, so instead of one acre, he'd give them four. Well, that made him a good experiment for me, okay? Okay, here's where the four was, and we the day before we had checked where the the sugar content and the sugar content right then the brome was higher sugar content than what the alfalfa was. It was just coming into flower, and we took the top part of the plant, and they were higher sugar content than the alfalfa. Okay, now you can see here. Yeah, this is 121,000 pounds of beef per acre, and see all the stalks here. There's one seed head left there. But they stripped all the seed heads and all that brown is the stalks from the the bone grass that they didn't want to eat. They ate all the alfalfa and the seed heads. Okay, next picture. This is the yeah, next one, four point something inches of rain. And this is on the other side. And this is 606, keep going. 606, 800 pounds of beef per acre. See how much greener it is here than here? 
Will you tell me? Now I don't know if this means anything, but this 